Hello and welcome, dear listeners, to episode 208 of the Reform Gamers, the first episode of 2022. Hello and welcome, dear listeners. My name is Logan. I have completely fallen out of how to even do the opening things, but as you can see, if you are watching the video, we've got the handsome bearded man himself back on the show. What up, the... The Terminator host because I'm bad. <laughs> or the Deerminator, you know, for those Ooh. of you that, that paid attention to us playing Halo and, well, attempting to play Halo in Regenerated's tournament. But, hey, we tried. We had fun. It was the most important <laughs> thing. Uh, and then we also got another handsome bearded man, our editor, Skinner. Dude, what is That's up? right. I'm here uh, because you asked me if I wanted to be on a show, and that's like asking <laughs> if a... Um, if a dog wants water or if a baby wants a bottle, I mean, yes, yes. Um, do I want to be on the show? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, of course, you, this is my first video appearance. I was going to say, this is your first video appearance. And, you know, we we're talking about this on the pre-show a little bit. You know, talk a little bit about your shirt there. I, I'm assuming people on YouTube can see this. I know we can't because it might be a little bit mappy here on Zencaster. That might um, get a little bit quality. better for you. But I- I'm tempted to just not tell people what it's about. Right. And let people type in the comments to see who can get it right. And whoever gets it right gets like, I don't know, my $5 GameStop monthly gift card thing that they send out. Because <laughs> I haven't been using them. So, right. Yeah, yeah. You know. You've probably had that for years. And it's just been wasting away. It's just been sitting there. Yeah. Wasting away and just disappearing into dust like. I don't know. And, and that's why I never had pro. Not not since the days when you used to get a game informer for it. Yeah, man, that's a long. That was, that was time a long time ago. ago. That was that was a long, long time ago. Speaking of things that have been like a long time ago, seven years ago was when we released our first episode of the podcast, and here we are, seven years later. Seven years of TRG starts now with this episode. So y'all. I'm still kind of blown away at the fact that this show has been going on for seven years. I thought I would have like ended the show long ago or, you know, well, you know, what's funny is there's like a group of podcasts that all started in the general same time frame. Mm -hmm. So like the super best friends, video game sleepover Mm -hmm. us, and even like all of the, um, like kind of funny stuff. Like back yeah. then, I didn't really know much about any of that, but all not that we're like by any means connected. I mean, we know a lot of people from the different communities, I guess. We're definitely um, as popular for sure. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> Our patron is, we're just right behind them by a few $20,000 yep. a month. <laughs> but it's just kind of neat kind of thinking through because they've been talking a lot about how it's their seven year anniversary. And I'm like, Seriously, like it, you, you started it right around that same time frame, mm-hmm. right, right after I like just got back from the field, getting married, and like all of these things. And I went from ba- barely being in the video game world to like, like deeply entrenched, it, like drowning in all the recos that people were giving in this reformed uh, pub video gamers group. Oh, that's and a podcast uh, no attached doubt. to it. With Jonathan Hinton, shout out to the OG uh, yeah. co-host. Like it, it, it is wild to think about seven years again. I haven't done many things for seven years of my life. Um, <laughs> I haven't lived in the same place for seven years. Like maybe once. I've I've moved around that much. Like even if, like houses and stuff. Uh, so it's it's cool, and I'm glad I get to be back. You know, I, these times are going to be definitely a lot fewer this year. But I'm glad that I got to be back for this one. So it's definitely fun to be back on the mic and uh, get to chop it up with you guys a little bit. Yeah, man, for sure. So I was talking to someone about this uh, recently, um, and they're like, you know, you outlived the pubcast. <laughs> yeah. Take and I was like, yes, that. we did. <laughs> We yes, defeated we, we defeated Federal Vision when we took down Doug Wilson's podcast in that Facebook poll thing, <laughs> and now we've outlived the podcast. You know, we're we're moving on up in the world. I know, right? We're moving on up. We're becoming, if only you uh, had a better ad- editor, like 
Okay, Skinner, are we get, are we about to like work on your self talk here on the episode? Because uh, I, I ain't gonna let you. <laughs> I made him. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, was, I was watching something the other day where they were doing some of that. We're like, no, you are worth it. There's like a funny commercial, but maybe it was it was in No Way Home. Did you guys see that? I was gonna say I was about to bring that up, but I don't yes! know if anyone listening yes! has, has talked yes, or seen it or not. So no, 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 no spoilers. spoilers. Uh, but, what a movie! What a movie! Man, what a movie! Right? What a my movie! Back. Oh man! I, what a movie! <laughs> I caught that reference. I, I, I caught it. Thanks, <laughs> Cap. Thank you. You know what's I funny is I caught that. I caught that reference much like Spider Man caught a certain someone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm just saying. Whoa. Those who've seen it, they know. People who haven't seen it, are like, what's he talking about? Spider Man caught something? Okay. Well, hey, Not COVID. the COVID, thankfully, because they didn't COVID. bring that up once. Because he no. wears a mask all the time. No. <laughs> Ex- except for in the final fight when he doesn't because he because never <laughs> Spider Man never wears a mask when he fights the final boss. That's true. Oh man, oh, it's always man. ripped off or because they shall run. die. You know what's crazy? I was watching. And this is getting a little long in the tooth, maybe of an intro, but who cares? It's seven years. We're, let's hang out, dear listeners. I was, I was went. Went that that words are hard starting the year off right words are hard. that's it oh, i went back and watched several of the older movies and it is nuts at how literally every single final fight in those movies spider-man's mask is either beaten up torn apart or it's just not even existent it's it's so funny i don't i don't get it i feel like he uh i feel like he needs a better like mask at this point it doesn't matter because they're if well, he dies he dies and then they, who's gonna tell whose identity is because <laughs> that's they, good they, point. uh you know, from a standpoint of just, you know, theatrics, whatever, you know, from an acting standpoint, the reason they do that is so you can see his face. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that see you can emotions. see the acting, that's the emotions, exactly. What I loved about Into the Spider-Verse, because it's animated, they just animated the mask mm-hmm. and made the mask have the emotions. Yep. Look cool. It did. It did. Look cool. You know what else looks cool? Us hitting seven years. Right. And continuing uh, this episode on, uh, in case you guys didn't know, or, you know, y'all are wondering, like, where's the game of the year episode? Where's the, you know, the deer awards and all that stuff? Well, we decided at least this year to, and I think last year we did this too, to push it off into the following year. So we had some extra time to play some, get, play some of those games that we didn't get a chance to, and hopefully have a couple more games uh, under our belt to talk about those here on the show. I at least have a few more that I can definitely talk about, thankfully, because I took time over Christmas break to knock out uh, several games like Shin Megami Tensei 5, Guardians of the Galaxy, which, man, we got to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy because I, mm, I was we'll not expecting there. that. We'll get Does there. Does it need we'll to go there. on my list? Does it need to go on I'll my list? There. We'll, we'll, as Adam's saying, we'll get there. But right, in right, short, right. yes, I was very okay. surprised by this game. Can we talk about the hair of the year with these gold, these golden curls that you're rocking out? You like that? Brother? You like I, that? Best hair of TG. I mean, I ain't got no hair yeah. at all. Yeah, you like uh, that? I mean, yeah. Yeah, look, they're uh, Skinner. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. somebody's got to win it, and you have well <laughs> earned it this year, you know man. Those saying? curls are you know what I'm saying? popping. I, uh, I'm going to be honest. I uh, wore my hair like this to class one day and all my students were like, dude, your hair looks awesome. I was like, well, looks like I'm wearing my hair like this the rest of the school year. So. And let me guess that is the least amount of work you had to do to it. Right. Oh, that dude, was just so out nice. of the shower, done. out of the shower, puts, put some, you know, conditioning gel in it. And then I'm ready to go. It just does its, it just does its thing and has a mind of its own. I'm like, all right. Yeah. This is buzz, buzz, buzz. Look at that. Look I'm at that. done. And then Adam looks like a, a bit of a hipster. I mean, nope. There I need it is. a haircut. <laughs> I'm looking old because it's longer right now, and it makes me mm. look more bald when my hair is semi-grown out where I have it. So it's definitely more reformed. <laughs> you know, that's why I get my hat on. When my hair, when I need a haircut, I rock a hat about ninety percent of the day. There you go. I just wear one regardless. I was going to say, like, I feel like I always see you with one of those, uh, what are those hats even called? It's like flat bowler cap. hats? Flat Flight cap. cap? Flat, flat cap? Flat cap. Flat cap. Yep. Flat cap. I have He's like a little boy selling his newspaper 13 the of corner. them. <laughs> of either Bring the newsboy, the ivy. <laughs> this this is the ivy style. It's disappearing into the clouds, dude. All right. Oh. It's gone. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah. That's the ivy style. Right okay. There. 
Newsboy okay. is the one that's got like the button on the top with the eight okay. panels. Um, he knows all about these hats, man. There was a, okay, so story time. <laughs> There's an old guy in my church. Mm hmm. Larry. Not you. Not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you youngins. Um, no, this dude has had like cancer. Um, he's still, he's still kicking, but I mean, he's on dialysis regularly, the whole nine yards. This man still gets up and if there's a hymn sing, he's going to be at it. And at one of these hymn sings, he was rocking a Guinness flat cap in his like Guinness, the beer. Yes. Okay. Yes. At one of these. <laughs> I'm like, sings. supposed to know about this. <laughs> and no, no, I just, um, anyway, so this dude is kind of my, like, he is my, my spirit master. animal, you know, because <laughs> spirit animal. he is, dude, I mean, this is a man who's gone through so much <laughs> and still loves Christ. Now he's ready to go home, but while he's still here, he's going to serve as much as he can. I mean, when I started putting on more weight, he had not only the, um, uh, cojones, but <laughs> the love to confront me about it and say, you know, I'm worried about you. You're looks like you're putting on too much weight. This can really affect a lot of things. I mean, like, and that takes a lot of guts. Like, you yeah. know, it's not like we're talking every week or anything like that all the time, but we've talked enough. Well, he gave me that hat. Huh? After I comment on it about how much I loved it. That started my collection. Uh, oh, yeah. And so this man, he's still, he's still kicking. Uh, he still loves God. Um, he's still on dialysis. He's still, I mean, he's very thin. He's very frail. But if he can make it to church, he's going to be there. And he was part of the reason why I was pushing them so hard for a video ministry, even before COVID. Uh, because there would be times he couldn't make it, and I wanted to make sure that he'd still uh, yeah, be able to join sense. us uh, for worship. And so, love Larry. He uh, he is the man. Um, He's a big listener of the podcast, I bet. You can give him that shot. I right? wish. I wish. <laughs> he will be now. I'm going to send him that clip. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, he's just, he's a really strong Christian man, and he's a mentor. He's a... He's one of those older cats that you, if you're a younger cat in the church, you need to find one of these that love God, that have been down the road and who can come alongside you and say to your face, hey, are you sure you're living right? Hmm. Yeah, you need people so, like that. That's yeah. good stuff, man. Sorry. That's good stuff. I know. I just, I just, I, anytime I can talk about Larry, I want to, because he's just such a cool guy. Yeah, so. man. No, nah, I get it. I, uh, impact. Yeah, man. I uh, I don't have a good segue, so I'm just <laughs> gonna say. I mean, people that have another good impact are the, the people that contribute to TRG and the different things. Is getting into a little bit of the housekeeping. I use the sound just for you, Skinner. I got that in there, man. Appreciate it. Also, because you helped remind me that I actually had it in there uh, before <laughs> we started recording, because I forgot. <laughs> But as always, dear listeners, there's some uh, there's always new content going up on the website, YouTube channel, and all that stuff uh, for you to check out. As always, in case you're, you're needing your TRG fix, you can go over to YouTube.com slash The Reform Gamers or The Reform Gamers.com to get yourself some content. Like Micah's new news show coming out every Friday morning, which is uh, pretty dope, in my opinion. You know, which reminds me, I need to actually probably work on the thumbnail for that with uh, Papa Phil Spencer on there. I'm going to boycott it after the craziness and the fantasy credits this year. <laughs> you hear that, Micah? He's he's boycotting it, man. He's he's not going to watch a new show. picketing outside the newsroom. <laughs> he's, mad, he's mad for making you bid at least a dollar on on Taking my money. <laughs> oh, man, good times. In case y'all aren't aware, uh, we'll talk. I'm sure we'll talk plenty about the uh, Dear Critics uh, fantasy critic league thing throughout the year. So, uh, plus both here on the podcast, discord, Facebook group, all that stuff. I, I guess, I mean, one of the things I could mention about housekeeping real quick, uh, let me finish up with that. Okay. YouTube go over there. Website, go over there. Um, 
I made some updates to the Discord server this morning, the day that we're recording, uh, January 12th, where you can now um, type in a command to start a music quiz where it'll play a song and you have to guess what the song is. And then if you win, I think it gives you extra XP in the server to help you level up. And so you've got that. It'll recognize birthdays now to where it'll wish people happy birthdays inside the bot commands channel. And uh, Skinner may br- bring about the snapping. You never know. I do want to bring up one thing that I made a change to as well, because someone brought it up and this was actually in a discourse that Skinner you had with someone else where they mentioned uh, changing, like doing the snapping. So that way randos don't just randomly share their content right. in the server. And I was like, wait a minute, I can just change the roles to change the, per- like change the permissions to allow for that. So I changed it to where basically if you contribute to the TRG server and you actually talk and hang out with people and hang out on the server, you actually have the ability to share your Twitch streams, blogs, whatever inside the server. But if you just join and react to the rules posts with the intention of just kind of sharing your stuff and, and quote unquote pimping it out, uh, you can't do that anymore because to me, I, I it, it kind of devalues kind of what share your content is there for. And yeah. it kind of makes it a little more, I've always had this thought of like, you, you can't go into a discord server and just share your, your Twitch channel, YouTube channel, whatever, and expect people to follow you because you haven't taken the time to invest in that community. And so you're right. not giving them any reason to come check your stuff out. So if you come into the TRG discord server and you hang out, get to know some people, make some friends and do all that. And you're working on some cool stuff on the side and plop it in there you have a higher chance of people actually checking your stuff out based on that rather than just showing up, dropping a link and expecting, I think like what there's over 700 people in the server to go check it out. Yeah. We've man. It's do you grown, remember man. when it was like 20? I do remember. I and mean, I, I kind of miss those days. Right? It was less chaotic, than, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's a good, it's a good server. It's a lot of fun over there. Mm-hmm. So if you do check it out, dear listeners, the link will, to that will be in your show notes. If you're listening to this on your podcast, catcher, if you're watching this over on YouTube link, a working link will be, uh, in the, uh, description bar because plenty of people have commented saying, Hey, that link doesn't work. I'm like, okay, I'll get you a fresh link. And, uh, so that will be changed. So that, those are some of the changes that we've made. I think you can get a there. permalink, but you've got to go to a special spot for it and it's annoying. Yeah, no, I finally got it. I figured it out. And so I've got that copied on a, on a notepad file. So I'll post those in with, uh, the show notes and all that stuff. So we may see even more people show up, which will be awesome. But yeah, so we've got yeah. some cool new features and that stuff's changing all the time. There might be a snapping where we reset the XP and levels of everybody, and uh, change the roles around a little bit in terms of names. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. It's always a fun time. But, yeah. I mean, it's been a long time since the last one. I think it's been it, over a year since I know. the last snapping. It's, it's been a while. I'm feeling that, like, you know, inner Thanos starting to get a little agitated. You know what I'm saying? So, but, yeah, we have some fun over there. But, as always, we have other avenues where you can connect with us, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Uh, I'm not on any of those platforms. I don't know if I told you guys, but I'll tell the dear listeners too. I've deactivated my Twitter. I've deactivated my Facebook. I couldn't figure out how to deactivate my Instagram. So I just deleted the app anyway and don't use uh, it. I tried so. to tag you the other day. There was a sweet deal for a uh, $17 three month game pass. Couldn't even tell you about it. Oh, you should have texted text, me. I should have texted you. You should have texted me. You still <laughs> text. <laughs> should have texted you. But yeah, no, I, uh, I just decided, man, I like, I don't like the way that social media just, I don't like the mindset it puts me in. So I'm still managing TRG's Twitter account. Um, but that's really it. So I I'm think, on Twitter still. And that's mainly think, just video games anyways. Yeah, it's mainly. That's that's, that's, that's I think, dumb. I think the Facebook stuff still is set to auto post, but I don't know how that works if I deactivated my account. So if it's stuff's not posting over there, I, I can't change it. It is what it is. I don't, I don't really care, but yeah. So uh, if, uh, if for whatever reason, uh, that is not working, I, I could always set up to do that for you. Yeah. I can always reactivate it real quick and then change around the permissions and then go back over there. But yeah. So yeah. 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 Cool stuff. We're starting off 2022. Uh, pretty good in my opinion, but let's continue starting off on the right foot by getting into the show with a little bit of what have we been playing? Adam, you handsome bearded man. Oh, it feels good to say that you handsome bearded man. What have you been getting into my dude? Yeah, it's, um, life has been, busy you know went to over the holidays made it back to michigan get to see some family took nice. my switch i'm like 
First, right. I mean, there's so many things, I guess. It's been three months worth of games I could be talking about here. Um, <laughs> I beat the gunk right before we left. I'm like, what's a short game? It was, okay. on, my, it was on my fancy critic. I so had to play it. I saw you playing this. And I'm like, what the heck is the gunk? I've never heard of this game. It's the junk is what it is. The gunk <laughs> is the okay, junk. Okay, here we go. It cost me second place. The real championship in fantasy cricket was uh, fantasy critic was second place because Alex crushed us all and everybody was only fighting for second place and they beat me by like a point and a half because the gunk couldn't get me four points. Uh, <laughs> it was a shame. It was okay. It just got super repetitive. It was yeah. whatever. So I played that, but yeah, I took my switch thinking I would play it some in Michigan. I I didn't open it once. The only thing I played was some. Mario Party uh, Superstars with my nephews and nieces, which is amazing. If you haven't awesome played that game, game awesome it's game. like it is the dream for Mario Party fans. If yep. you grew up playing one, two, three, some of the different GameCube games, it is the dream for Mario Party fans because it's just it just it's it works. The good yep. maps, the good games that you can adjust what which uh, games you want to play from which system. Mm-hmm. It's just so well done. It is. Yeah. It's everything that I could have asked for uh, on a on a Mario Party game because, you know, I'm I'm not necessarily a connoisseur because there's some of them I haven't played, but mm-hmm. I consider myself a big Mario Party fan, and yeah. there's not much more I could ask for. You know, you always hope they might add a couple more maps mm-hmm. like that, just because why not? It's not that right. hard to do. I wouldn't think. Just beep boop 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 put in the remaster, <laughs> and it's and it's good. Um, but really, really enjoyed playing that. But the games I'm playing right now, um, yeah, I'm playing some Halo Infinite. Uh, not nice. so much some multiplayer anymore. I've kind of, once I started the um, campaign, I kind of said, okay, I'm going to probably press pause on multiplayer. Um, and so I didn't want to start it until I could really get into it. So I waited until I got back from Michigan. And so I'm probably a handful of hours into that. It's a good time. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you what's really happening in the story. Um, don't know if that matters. I'm just, I think it's just a gameplay. <laughs> I can um, tell you what happens. Uh, Not so that I'm just kind of roaming around, taking over stuff, beating up baddies and having a good time with it. Uh, and then the other game that I've started here recently is Final Fantasy VII Intergrade Intermission <laughs> XP Remake. I was going to say, you got to love the, those titles. Yeah, it's like, come on now. Which, um, yeah, it's good. It's more the same. I've kind of had my eye on it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then when uh, Square Enix decided to allow the free version of Final Fe- Fantasy VII that they gave away on PlayStation Plus to be upgraded oh, for free yeah. to the PS5 right. version, I said, okay, now I'm in because I didn't want to have to buy a physical copy. Wait, do PS4. I have that? You might. You probably have it. Um, well, here's the thing. You don't, <laughs> they give you the upgrade to the PS5 version. You still have to buy the DLC, which is like 15 bucks, right? Which was 15 bucks, which wasn't bad yeah. because I just didn't want to have to buy a PS5 version just to get it. So, <laughs> right, right, right. um, so I'm, it's only two chapters. I just finishing up the first chapter. It's a good mm-hmm. time. Yuffie plays yeah. well. Uh, I want to see what it looked like on the PS5. It looks great, plays great. Mm -hmm. Um, It just, I mean, that world was a ton of fun. Uh, You forget how goofy it is, how (laughs) Final Fantasy games are, but it's it's a good little dip. You know, it's 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 probably going to end up being five hours. I didn't look up the how long to be. It's probably only going to be five hours or so of gameplay. Yeah, it's pretty short. But I've did you play it? Yeah, yeah, I played it. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Whenever it, it, it came out, I played it then. But I've definitely enjoyed my time with it. So I've got a backlog. Um, you know, I quit the podcast and I just went ham and bought a bunch <laughs> of games. Played Astral Chain. Decided it wasn't really for me, yeah, so I got rid of that. Oh, that hurts. It was just the dungeons or whatever you want to call them were just too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, Like, I feel like okay. I was in that world too long. Like, I didn't mind going in there, but I feel like they just kept going and going. I'm like, yeah. So, again, it was, I can see why people like it. It just could. It didn't. It didn't get its hooks in me. Fair um, I, I picked up Persona Five Strikers for the Switch, mm-hmm. and they gave it to us for free on PlayStation Plus. <laughs> You're like, of so course, I sold that. <laughs> you know, I got it for a good deal, so I got my money back. But um, I got uh, 
Tales of Arise waiting for mm, me. Yeah. I've got Far Cry 6 waiting for me. Yes. Um, I got, I've been wanting to play uh, Kingdoms of Amalur. That was a PlayStation Plus game. So I've mm-hmm. got a nice little I've got a nice little backlog. That's that right. I'm not going to touch as I buy Horizon <laughs> for mm-hmm. Midwest and yes. multiple other games that will be coming out soon. But right, build right. that backlog, Adam. If, if but here's the thing, I'm I feel like because I've got a nice little backlog, I can wait. I don't have to pick them up right away. Horizon, mm-hmm. I'll probably pick up right away. But sure, I've I've sure. gone the route of King of Thrift mm. buying used on Facebook. If you wait like a week or two, it's dropping yeah. fifteen to twenty bucks, and it's like 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 new condition. So yep. that's my most recent kind of the King of Thrift has returned. My, my, my <laughs> hack is Facebook. It man, you can get some good good gaming deals on on Facebook. Yep. But yep. that's what I've been playing. That's what life and gaming has been like. Um, yeah, I've got, I'm excited to talk about some of the awards later. Right on, right on. Skinner, let's kick it over to you, man. What have, uh, what you've been playing lately? Okay. Well, so, you know, I finished kingdom hearts and mm-hmm. I needed something else to play. And I realized that, um, you know, right after y'all gifted me the, uh, the PS4, I, Worked a couple of weddings and saved my money and went and got my PSVR. Yeah, and buddy. I had not been giving it any love whatsoever. That has changed. Yeah, looks like um, it. I'm not gonna lie. When I looked at the dock and saw what you've been playing, I'm like, I'm so excited to hear Skinner talk about. It. I'm not gonna ruin it, but there's yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So, and of course, I have to have a game that I'm playing with my kids so that. Spoilers, uh, no. Um, so I've been playing Beat Saber. First yes, class, yes. And that has got to be some of the most fun that I've had in a while yeah, man. Um, with a rhythm game. Because that's all it is. It's a rhythm game, mm-hmm. let's be honest. With lightsabers. With lightsabers. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Call any game with lightsabers just a game. Very right. Well. Exactly. And so... Um, I was, uh, you know, going through the campaign and then all of a sudden you're on like 9A and it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, move your hands over 600 meters in this song or 650 meters. And I'm like- That's the one that made me quit because I couldn't get it. Okay. So what you have to do with that one is just constantly be moving your hands around while you're waiting for the bricks to come and then slash the brick. I beat it. Um, And- I beat uh, both of the move your hands as little as possible. No, that's the those are the ones that made me quit. Was those yeah. ones there? Yeah, and so what you have to do is basically you have to T Rex it. Keep your hands T-rex. right, like look like this, right here. You have to T Rex okay. it, and then just do this, like this. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's how I beat it today. Oh, that's that's gonna be a clip that goes out on Twitter. <laughs> Some of those DLCs are super nice in Beat Saber too. I mean, I was getting in. I don't know if it's EDM or dubstep. I don't know what you. I don't know what categories any of these songs are. But there are some mm-hmm. songs I'm listening to that I'm like, this is making me feel away. I mean, and I like it. What was they have Skrillex like, on there? They've got the Lincoln Park. They got Lincoln Park. That's the one that I got into the most. And uh, Green Day um, for me. Uh, was it Green Day? It was uh, not Imagine Dragons. It was it Pan- yeah, I think it was Panic remember. at the Disco was the one Panic I got really the into. There too. Yeah. Um, so so that's what I'm going to be. Uh, I've got, I do these, um, I do the surveys with uh, E-Rewards or whatever. Oh yeah. And like I did a big one that got me like, uh, like $125 worth. So it was like 300 E-Reward points. Oh yeah. No, no, it was a big one I got involved in, which was cool. So the thing that irritates me is you can only redeem a $25 GameStop gift card every three months. Oh, <laughs> dang. So you're spacing those out. Right? So I got another 25 bucks coming this month. <laughs> I'm going to use it to go get me some PlayStation credit so I can buy me some stuff for the beat nice. saber. Right Either on, that man. or Rock Band because I play Rock Band with the family too. Oh, that, right, that yeah, one yeah. just I never stopped. Like it basically anytime I'm on, I could say, "Yeah, I've been playing Rock Band." You know, mm-hmm. like, 2006. Skinner's been <laughs> yes. playing Rock Band. Yes. <laughs> His family's like, "What year is it?" That's their family meme as yeah. they all sit down and who's on the drums, who's on the, the who's got the, the mic? Turkey O'Gool. 
the dear Ooh. wife, she is on the drums and she rocks it. Um, my daughter is on vocals. I'm on bass right and on. my son plays guitar. I and love it. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. You know, we all have a spot. We all get to do stuff. Um, but I got to move on because I'm, I'm taking up too much time. But so Beat Sabers won. You mentioned lightsabers. Mm. I had to get the other lightsaber game. Dude, this is the one I was waiting for because I, I still have not played this, but I know I need to. V- Vader Immortal. Okay, so. Please tell me it's good. I loved it. Okay, I was like, that pause is giving me a lot of anxiety right now. <laughs> it may not be for everyone because there were a couple of times where you've got to like put your lightsaber up and it okay. didn't want to like actually put up for me. And that could have just been the way my setup is for my sure, VR. Sure, sure. Um, and I haven't opened up dual lightsabers yet. But <laughs> dual lightsabers, yes. I, I think so, yeah. Um, but um, Okay, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you're going to play this game, uh, skip ahead about 20 seconds. You fight Vader. Wait, I thought you played as Vader. No. No. That's a plot twist. At the very end, you fight (laughs) Vader. At the beginning, he's like... Logan was real disappointed. He's like, hold up. Hold up. No, you're actually playing as somebody who can maybe open up this thing so he can... um, And you find this on very early. He's trying to bring Padme back. Oh no. So, He's doing the thing with the okay. Uh but there's a there's a lightsaber dojo where you basically just get to fight robots at infinitum. Like Skinner, I don't speak French. Pro- You're gonna have, what does that mean? Add add what? There's infinite it, ads? Basically infinity. You just keep oh, getting okay, fight okay. droids and, and like the droids will come up and they'll swing sabers at you. Um, sorry, I was thinking you were saying there's going to be an ad for cryptocurrency no, in the middle no, no, of it no, or an no, NFT popping up. Like, okay, come on now. <laughs> no, it means to infinity. Okay. But not beyond. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, the, the little droid, droid that would fire around and blast at Luke? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Those two. Oh, those are, okay, okay. So i um, cool. Like, it's very, if you like Star Wars... If you like lightsabers, you should play this game. If you okay. have a PSVR, like right. okay, it's short. There's a lot of ifs in that statement that you just made. <laughs> yeah, well, because because the thing is, I know not everybody is going to be down for this. I get that. However, for me, um, this I think just you can scratched play it on an itch. Quest. You can play it on a lot of. I think it's on yeah. all of the different platforms. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, Reform Jedi playing it on. Whatever Quest the PC two. one is, I that's true. Yeah, yeah, I think it's on Oculus as well. So Oculus um, might have been it. Yeah, it's probably lower price of entry or point of entry if you don't have a PlayStation. But mm-hmm. right, yeah, if you've got some kind of VR, go find this game. Yeah, um, yeah. Vader Immortal, and then lastly, I mentioned I was playing games with my family, uh, so my kids. Uh, this one's mostly with my son. My daughter plays a little bit, but uh, Lego DC Super Villains nice. or Villains. Um, Is that the one where you make a villain? Yes. So nice. um, I made Popperoni because my kids call me Pop. <laughs> um, he's green skinned with a big red beard. Um, so kind of like right on. have some Hulk vibes going on, but um anyway it's a fun lego game that's all i can say about it i mean it's yeah. got it's dc villains so you're opening them up i mean i opened up blue beetle early so i'm getting to basically just fly all over the map doing oh, whatever cool. i want um, so you get the heroes too then it's not just the villains yes yes you do get to open heroes as well because they're doing okay they're doing the um the justice syndicate storyline so the Justice Syndicate comes in and basically traps the Justice League in uh, the other Earth dimension, the okay. one where the Justice League are the bad guys. And sure. uh, oh, oh, sorry. The, the, my my knowledge of DC stuff only goes so far. I'm not familiar with Justice Syndicate. Oh, or, I, I didn't realize that. I was showing how weeby I was. Oh. Not. Oh. <laughs> If you're talking about Demon Slayer about as much as they do in the Discord, then you'd be showing that side, but <laughs> you're not. 
<laughs> that's only because we don't have a spot called what have we been reading okay no okay fair enough because <laughs> i did enough. get heather that for christmas the whole box set <laughs> <laughs> fair enough well yeah um, so lego dc villains though you recommend it if you like lego games yeah okay yeah. i mean it's Sorry. a good platformer um mm-hmm. it's a good co-op game for sure um and you know there's Fun little puzzles to figure out. Uh, I haven't been too frustrated with the gameplay. Um, okay. And there's a lot of unlockables. I mean, just so many unlockables. So this is going to be one of those that I spend a lot of time trying to get the plat on. Yeah. I go for those long run plats. I was going to say, like, if anyone's holding down the platinum for at least as far as the podcast is concerned, it's definitely been you. Yours are a little more long in terms of the, the pursuit. Dying but... Light 2 is like 500 hours long. There's no way it's 500 hours long. Yeah, they probably. But it's going to be a beefy platinum, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. And if there's yeah, co-op, Adam, we might, have to, we might have to co-op that one, dude. <laughs> I love me some Dying Light. Dying Light's always good. It's always good. All right. Well, so you? Uh, as far as what I've been playing then, uh, I did mention, you know, played some Guardians of the Galaxy. I'll talk about that a little bit later. What a surprise of a game that was. Uh, I played, what did I play over the break? I played more Forza Horizon 5, of course. Uh, I played Shin Megami Tensei 5, but that was an interesting experience. Um, for those that are curious, I did get the law ending, which is, yeah, it was the law ending. Um, but I'll save that for, I'm working on trying to get Josh from Backlog Breakdown and Wesley Ray, the henchman dad himself, on here to discuss that game with me because there, there's so much to talk about. I won't get into it in this episode here. Um, I will say that there's parts of it I did like better than Persona, but there's also parts of Persona I like a little bit better. Um, but they're they're good in different aspects of of the games. But as I was kind of starting the year off, I was sitting here looking at, you know, my, my library, as I call it, I don't call it the backlog anymore. I call it library. I keep, I keep positive vibes going. You know what I'm saying? Plus if y'all have watched the YouTube thing, you know, TRG backlogs become TRG library. So I was looking at these games that I have been not pestered, but like I've been recoed several times by a, a niche portion of our community to play the legend of heroes games. And so I've tried to get into Trails of Cold Steel multiple times, couldn't do it. So I saw that I had Trails in the Sky, which is the first one sort of in the series. It's really the best one to onboard yourself with in the series. And I started playing that 10 hours in, no, 12 hours in, just started chapter two. And uh, I'm going to say this, I'm enjoying the game, but it is the very definition of a slow burn because it it takes its time with that story to the point where I'm like, ah, I, I can see people that are into JRPGs either loving or hating this. I feel like this is, this is kind of a hard sell because of how much of a slow burn it is, but I'm enjoying it. The characters are great. What I love about it is just that this game came out in 2004, insane level of attention to detail. Every NPC feels like they have their own story, their own personality. And when you do different side quests and stuff, you can go and talk to them and they have a completely different set of dialogue. If you oh, open that's up, the one I saw y'all talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of mind blowing because it, it incentivizes you to talk to NPCs after you complete different side quests because their dialogue is always different. Mm-hmm. Um, the orb mint system is just like the materia system. So it's easy to play that and get into it. If you played final fantasy seven and it, they even went so far, at least in the English version of the game, to where when you open a chest, if you go back to that chest and hit the interact button, it'll give you a unique dialogue for that specific chest. So each chest has its own specific dialogue for it being empty. There's there's times where it'll say, like, this chest is empty. Oh, so empty. Like, really depressing and things like that. Seems or it'll say, it, it'll say something like, really, you're resorting to checking empty chests now? That's pretty sad. And I'm like, so... So it's it's cool to see how they've just added these little these little nuggets into the game uh, here and there. And oh, so I love stuff like that. It's it's pretty cool. It, um, the music's great. It's got a little bit of Persona vibes to it, where it's kind of like that upbeat, jazzy sort of thing. I'm like, okay, I'm digging this. Uh, it's a little different in terms of how it handles a party because normally in other JRPGs, you you add people to your party and you get to know them and you grow with them. 
this game it rotates out uh, a lot of party members with the exception of the two main characters Estelle and Joshua who are brother and sister and so you get to know them really well and for a game that came out in 2004 it's really well written like the characters are funny they're unique the interactions are great it's I'm enjoying it, but like I said, it's it's a slow burn. Uh, I'm 12 hours in, and I'm just now getting to Chapter 2. I spent probably five hours in the prologue alone, and so it's it's hard to recommend just based off that, but I mean, if you like really well-written stories, if you like you know uh, a great complex battle system, uh, just level or a deep level of attention to detail, check it out. I mean, it always goes on... The first three games, uh, Trails in the Sky, 1, 2, and 3, always go on sale on Steam, so you can pick it up there. Um, I think they're on Vita, uh, if you want to play them over there as well. And so you can check those out. I, I think they're on Vita. Don't quote me, Skinner. I see you getting hyped over there. I don't I don't know if they're on there for sure, but but they're good. I, I, I like it. I'm interested to see where it goes and, and see how it all goes out, because people tell me all the time, it's better than Final Fantasy, it's better than Persona. And I'm like, okay, those are fighting words. Right. So you gotta check it out. You gotta check it out. But yeah, it's uh, it's good. Uh, lastly, I've been putting a lot of time into Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite's multiplayer. Uh, I just, it, it just, it flipped that switch to where I just, I'm getting hooked on it, hopping in there, playing it. I Play still have ranked? my grabs. Of, yeah, getting ranked. I think I'm like a gold four uh, now, and uh, so I don't know if that's good or not, but <laughs> that's what my rank is. Mainly got ranked so I could play in Regenerated's tournament, uh, which. I mean, this last round we we did really good. We kind of picked things up and 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 fought pretty well. We uh we we earned some of our scars, so to speak. Um, Who was your squad? It was me, uh, Mo from the Discord. Uh, Isaac was in there. Although this last round we Isaac had to duck out, and we got Henry in, who's been on the show before. And then we got one of Mo's friends. Whose last, whose first name I can't remember, but he, uh, his last name is Cop. So you know, we just we called him Cop. So sure, or he goes by Sergeant Fury uh, on Xbox. So shout out to you guys. We, we had a lot of fun the other night. But my I still boy my gri- Mo, my boy I, Mo, Mo's a good guy. We uh, I still have my gripes about the multiplayer though. I, I hate the progression system. I hate the shop. I hate how expensive everything is. It's just I I, I hate that stuff. I was I was pining in reminiscing of the days in like halo three, you would do something cool and you'd get a piece of armor. You know, I got a medal in this last match where I spun her, I did a 360 and then I took someone out and it gave me a medal for it. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if it gave me a helmet for that or a decal or something, you know, but you know, as Henry pointed out, they're not going to do that when there's people who are willing to buy it. So it is what it is. The multiplayer for free. Isn't that enough? Logan? No, it's not enough. Adam. Isn't I, that enough? I am a needy, needy man. I'm a, an American Here's and I'm entitled. <laughs> Heaven forbid you have to put any money into it. Heaven forbid. They get cosmetic items that do absolutely nothing. Heaven forbid they give oh you a reason to unlock gosh. stuff and rank up. Oh man. <laughs> you're a gold four. You're you're ranking up some, so I don't know that, I don't know what that means, but I guess it's it means like, I'm decent. I don't know what the levels are, but it's higher than what I am. So good yeah. job. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Way higher than what I am. <laughs> Skinner, we need to get you on there, man. Get you ranked. Skinner's Look, in, you saw what happened when you got me on Skinner's a, a platinum eight and rock band. <laughs> He's a platinum eight can, and rock band. That's all. That's whatever all that needs. means. That's all he needs. But yeah, that's as far as what I've been playing. I uh, haven't really been doing much aside from that because I'm still trying to do my teacher certification and I'm building model Gundams. So I'm just like, you know. You have been into some of those uh, you know what I'm saying? niche things per se. Yep, yep. And that's how it goes. Might do a YouTube video on it later. But before I do that, yeah. I got to remind you all to rate and review the podcast on your podcast app of choice, whether it's Spotify or iTunes. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that like button. Maybe consider smashing the subscribe button, as the kids say, and turning on your notifications so you never miss an upload and all that jazz. But let's get into something that is much cooler than the Dundies. If you don't watch The Office, much cooler than the Dundies. What, what are the Dundies? Don't play. Don't How play. Can I explain it? <laughs> I don't know the rap that they do with it. There's like a Dundies rap that Michael did. I don't remember. We're I still watching. don't know it. I still don't. Don't lie to me, Skinner. I know you've no, seen you. No, you know show. I've only. No, you. you oh, never, that's right. I, no, yeah. no, no, no. I do it. 
out of principle now. <laughs> That's right. You're the friend that I know who has never seen the show versus my friend who has seen the show, but lied to me for two years and told me he had never seen it. And then he pulled out this random obscure knowledge from one of the episodes and then surprised us all. I, I have right. now seen two episodes of the show. Okay. So that's uh, like what the intro and the outro, uh, the, the, the first episode and, um, uh, what the, um, racial, whatever day. Oh, diversity day. Diversity day. Yeah. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, that fair that w- it was so cringe. I just couldn't make it through. I, I like, I'm yeah, done. The whole first season's kind of cringe, but is I just what couldn't it is. make it past it. Is what it is. But yeah, this is the Dear Awards for 2021. We're going to talk about some of the games that we've played. Uh, some of the go over some different awards and uh, highlight some community members. That's right. Giving out our first Dear Listener of the Year award to one or several people. So I thought it would be fitting to kind of revisit the year a little bit. I'm gonna, And I was going through just the 2021 release catalog of games just to kind of see, you know, what are some big games that came out over the year? What are some that we missed, some that we played? And when I compiled the list, I was looking at it and going, you know, I now understand why people call 2021 the year of the backlog because there's, there's still some good games that came out, but like, Apart from remasters or remakes or something like that, bit of a light year in comparison to something like 2018, which is the year that Skinner's been revisiting where we had God of War and Spider-Man and Rock all Band. these other games. So let me go through some of these things. I'm not going to list literally every game. So if I miss a game, dear listeners, don't come at me in the YouTube comments, which by the way, YouTube comments are getting weird on our channel. Y'all like, Y'all need to settle down, okay? As, the ones as they say, the weird comments probably aren't even ones listening. It's just some random troll. Probably, probably, probably. Yep, 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 yep. Anyway, so uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that. Uh, Skinner, was that you with the Gurren Logan display pick the other day? Thankfully, no. Okay, I was going to say because I was about to trash the dude for liking Gurren Logan. Anyway, in January of last year. We got Hitman 3, Cyber Shadow. Following month, we got the Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury ported to the Switch. Persona 5 Strikers, Bravely Default 2. March brought us Crash 4. It Takes 2, which just took up a bunch of awards across uh, different outlets. Monster Hunter Rise, which is getting released on Steam today, the day that we're recording this. Uh, April brought us Outriders, MLB The Show 21, New Pokemon Snap Returnal, which I'm sure we'll talk about that one on the show here. May brought us Resident Evil Village. That was the only big game that came out in May. June brought us June brought us Final Fantasy VII Remake, Intergrade, Inter- whatever it's called, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Ender Lilies, which isn't really a bigger game, but I wanted to highlight it anyway because it was a bit of a surprise for me last year. Really good Metroidvania. Scarlet Nexus, July, saw Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, which is a game that made me feel all sorts of things. You guys can go listen to the episode on that. Death's Door, which is an indie game that took the world by storm. A Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster started coming out then as well on Steam and iOS. August brought us Hades on everything else, so people that were on things other than the Nintendo Switch or PC got to play it finally. Psychonauts 2, a game that we won't talk about because Adam will have PTSD about his fantasy critic. And then September got us NBA 2K22, Tales of Arise, Deathloop, Kenna Bridge of Spirits, Hot Wheels Unleashed, which is a, a hit with the families. And then October brought us Metroid De- Dead, Metroid Dread. Well, you see the dead screen a lot because you die a lot in that game. Far Cry 6, Back for Blood, Guardians of the Galaxy, Mario Party Superstars. And then November, we got the usual uh, suspects of Call of Duty, Battlefield, uh, for- a new Forza, Pokemon. But then Halo Infinite Shadow dropped and made us forget literally everything, including the atrociously bad GTA trilogy and our uh, JRPG fans rejoice when we got Shin, Mata- Shin Megami Tensei 5. So, try to say that five times fast. And then rounding out the year, we got Final Fantasy XIV's new latest DLC and Endwalker Halo Infinite's campaign. And for the horror fans, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, which is a game I started playing recently. And boy, is it scary. So we got, like I said, you, you remove the remakes, you remove the ports, you remove the remasters kind of a mildly lightly mildly light year in regards to new releases and things like that but there's still plenty of games to talk about which i'm sure we'll get to and the first one we'll get to as always dear listeners before i get into these rewards if there's any of these awards that you want to share like your picks for feel free to comment on youtube channel 
hit hit us up on uh, Twitter. If you talk to us on Facebook, I won't see it, but the other these other guys will. So feel free to share that stuff over there. So our first award, I wanted to bring this up because I was curious to know which game surprised us the most. So for you guys, which game gets the sneak attack award? Let's start with you, Adam, handsome bearded man himself. What game yeah, surprised you the most? I mean, there were some some games that weren't really on my radar at the beginning of the year. I mean, I think of twelve minutes. That's on some of the awards mm-hmm. that we're going to be giving. That's one that had no idea anything about it, and then I played it, and I was like, "Wow!" So I'll share maybe a little bit more about <laughs> okay. that later. Um, Returnal is another game that I played, and again, didn't have a ton of expectation. You end up hooking me up with a copy for us to to talk about and play and that game was great but probably the biggest surprise is when we've hinted at a little bit but guardians of galaxy yeah that game was way better than anyone thought it was gonna be i mean yeah. i think after avengers kind of rubbed some people the wrong way i don't think anyone expected guardians of the galaxy to be as good as it was but the writing was phenomenal the voice acting mm-hmm. again once you let go of the mcu you know, yeah. actors and their voices and you just let them be what they are. The story was intriguing and and heartfelt many times. Yeah. The gameplay was good. I won't say it was like great, but it wasn't bad. The gameplay play was enjoyable. So all around, but when I when I played it and then when I finished, I was just like, wow, like that was I mean, maybe at the end of the night today I'll share my top ten, but it is up there on yeah. Um, some of my favorite game as one of my favorite games of the year. So that'd probably be my biggest surprise that I wouldn't even plan on playing it. And then it was like stupid cheap. Yeah. It was like 25 bucks. Yeah. Like three weeks after it came out. Yeah. So I hopped like, on that deal. All right. I'm going to play it, I guess. Yep. I, uh, I'm going to piggyback on that and, and go with Guardians of the Galaxy too. Like there were several games I played that surprised me a little bit. 12 minutes was a good one that you brought up. I was like, okay, this is okay. 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 Um, but Guardians. Yeah. You mentioned Avengers and I was like, yeah, I like this is getting put up by Square Enix. I watched the trailer. This looks stupid. These aren't, you know, it's not Chris Pratt. It's not Vin Diesel going, I am Groot. You know, I just, you know, I, I don't see it, but then I kept seeing the reviews. So I get, you know, super cheap. I'm like, all right, I'll try it out. And then I played it over winter break and was like, where did this game come from? Like it, what? And and what's interesting. I listened to a few other podcasts talk about the game and they kind of remarked about how they prefer this rendition of the guardians over the MCU version. Now. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of a tall order. But by the time I finished, I was like, I just spent 10 hours with these characters. I think I kind of prefer them too. Like there's, the writing is surprisingly good. The characters and their interactions surprisingly good was not expecting that from this game. So I, I think I would, I think I would pick, uh, I'd pick guardians of the galaxy too, with an honorable mention to, uh, doctor who the lonely assassins, which a small portion of our audience would probably be interested in that, that are doctor who fans, but yeah, guardians of the galaxy, uh, hundred percent. Uh, I, I would give my sneak attack award too, but Skinner, man, what about you? Okay, so I, w- I will start my section of the awards by saying, as you've said, all of my games are going to be <laughs> a little bit dated. Yeah. <laughs> um, because, well, let's face it, up until y'all gave me the PS4, I was still playing PS3 games. In fact, if you hadn't given me a PS4, I'd probably (laughs) still be playing PS3 games. So, Well, and that's, as a caveat, in case you're a new listener, uh, (laughs) that's the beauty of our Dear Awards. We pull games from, like, whatever we played last year. It doesn't have to be a, a, a 2021 release. It could be anything. So that's just how we do on the show. And if you don't like it, well, get over it. It's our show. This is how we do things. Skinner, continue. So... That being said, I just wanted to preface that because I know, you know, some new listeners might not be, you know, aware of that. And Mm -hmm. my sneak attack goes to Beat Saber. Yes. Worthy title. I was surprised. Like, okay, like you said earlier, Adam, it's lightsabers. I mean, it's got to be good. (laughs) Um, But I was really surprised how difficult it can be. Um, you know, I've played a lot of rhythm games. Normally I can get up to hard pretty quickly. You know, not a whole lot of trouble with that. 
this one, this puts you through your paces. I mean, yeah. basically, this is kind of replaced my, um, you know, my workout on the bike with the iPad. I've been doing Beat Saber instead because, I mean, heart rate wise, it's getting it up there. Yeah. I'm moving around. I'm getting to enjoy some good techno, EDM, house. I mean, they got all, you know, all that whole genre of uh, good pumping music. And, you know, um, don't get the green day pack because i forgot just how profane the songs yeah. are like daddy what are we listening to and you're like oh no uh, thankfully they bleep a lot of that stuff out but i mean i still know what they're saying say you can kind of piece it together yeah, yeah i remember man. listening to them back in high school yeah man and they disappeared and he disappeared. <laughs> yeah, because you gotta bring up how old I am. Golly. Sorry, man. I just I just like no, you put uh, your head down and you like disappear on your green screen or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, He's go, gone be, to heaven. He just he aged so fast. He just you know, <laughs> he, he Thanos snap dusted himself away. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's it. Uh but yeah, I mean I was just uh I was just surprised by it. Um I really don't have anything else that really kind of surprised me. I knew yeah. God of War was going to be good this year. I knew yeah. Spider-Man was going to be good this year. I knew Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn was going to be good for me this year. Um, so You're at the you know, point where you shouldn't be playing anything bad, Skinner. You should only be no, playing the no. good games. I mean, really, yeah. I mean, you know, I told you earlier, my backlog, I mean, we're, we're looking at Jedi Fallen Order, Persona 5, uh, Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 15, um, Death Stranding and She's Last of Us. I mean, you know, I've got amazing games. And that's just the stuff that I got physical. That doesn't even count yeah. all the digital stuff. I, I mean, I never played the Bioshock series. I've got that. I never finished Uncharted series. I've got that. Um, I'm Adam's sorry, like Adam. Like face palming so hard. <laughs> I see that. I'm so oh, sorry. Man. I've so got well- so- well, Adam's recovering. I got to know because we didn't cover this. What difficulty are you playing Beat Saber on? Have you moved on to hard and expert yet? I, I am doing some hard songs on hard. Uh, a lot of it I'm still doing normal, like some of the okay. like, uh, Fit Saber. That Fit Saber one I'm having to do on normal, that's one of the extras. Okay. Okay. Um, and the spooky one, that was on normal. But some of the earlier songs, like $100 Bills. Yeah, you know, yeah that's a good bills. one. That's um, a good one. It is, it is. Um, I'm, I'm rocking it on hard and, uh, trying to move on up. I mean, I'm up to what, 14 a in the campaign. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You've gotten farther than I have then. Fair enough. Yes. Fair enough. I've been, I have been vindicated. Yeah, man. Fair enough. Well, I think Adam's recovered. So I think we'll move on to our next award. He, no, no, no. He's (laughs) still, okay. He's just shaking his head. And Bioshock collections. Yeah. Oh, I've also got um, Arkham no, Knight to play. I don't care about that. <sighs> Logan can rub his face about that one. But hang, on, anyways, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So you haven't Resident played the Evil first... Two. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Have you even played the first Bioshock? No, wasn't my type of game, so I never played it back in the day. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna clip this out so I can post it on Twitter <laughs> and let our people following us on Twitter make fun of you. Shame. Um, Everybody shame this boo man. Boo this man, all that <laughs> yes. stuff. So um, <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our next award as we just ponder like how Skinner's is even on. I don't know. I, just, I mean, okay. I've been gaming for 30 years and no. Oh gosh. 35 years. 35 I'm years 40, and you still somehow miss Bioshock. Man. I'm 40 because I'm I'm I'll be 43 this year. Man. And I've actually been gaming since I was like five or six. So yeah, we're talking 38 years and I missed Bioshock. I missed, I missed Halo. Um, cause I didn't have an Xbox. I was a, I was a Sony Here's a dear listener the award for biggest game that Skinner has yet to play that he has listed in this episode. You go right. on our Twitter and tag us and Skinner on what game he has missed that is the best of all of the wonderful games. Look, I beat Teenage played. Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 on okay. the NES. Cool. To us, the like millennials, trash. we don't care because yeah, the water level is atrocious. But for real, no cap, as my kids would say. Dear listeners, 
Go on Twitter <laughs> and tag TRG and Skinner. It's just at Skinner Ness, I think is what it is. If Skinner get, underscore Ness. There you go. Tag him in it and tell him what is the biggest game that he has not played that he needs to play this year. I am dead serious. Go to our Twitter. Go on Discord. Just about any game that was any good. <laughs> and Skinner's yeah, like, likely not played it. They're over here playing Kingdom Hearts <laughs> instead of playing Bioshock. Anyway, okay, we've razzed them enough. Let's go to the next award here. Uh, so this one uh, is just kind of our favorite indie. You know, there's a lot of bigger games that come out, but there's also some kind of smaller games that come out that are really, really good that deserve some highlights. So, Adam, let's kick it to you, man. What's a What was your favorite indie of last year? Yeah, there's a couple um, good ones. I have to always look up because I don't ever know really what's considered an indie anymore right, and, right. with everybody being bought out, but... Uh, Canterbury's Spirits was a good one. Yeah. Not that that would probably be mine, but if I'm thinking of the game that probably um, kind of comes with that surprising, Kena, I actually thought I would like it more than I did, mm-hmm. and it was it was fine. I mean, it was a good game. But the game that probably well, I was like, this is my favorite, would be 12 Minutes. I, oh, wow. Like, it was just interesting is is all get out i mean you play yeah. if, if you played it it gets its hooks in you like immediately and you want to find out okay how do i extend the loop how do i keep learning how do i progress the story and do the right things yeah it gets a little weird in the ending mm-hmm. um but it was pro it was like some of the most it might be the most creative game that i've played and one easily one of the most memorable games that i played because it was just Again, not a super long game. I don't even know how long it was. Maybe four, five, six, six hours, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but such a fun little ride. Um, was again, we have a lot of those kind of uh, what do you call them? Like almost, not loops, but where you just kind of keep playing the same stuff over and over and over and unlocking uh, like, more things and kind of like a Groundhog Day sort of thing. Yeah, and it was. I really enjoyed it. So that'd probably be my. Um, best indie game that I played this year. Right on, cool. A favorite, I guess. Probably not best, but favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, when I was kind of thinking about my pick for this, I mean, I was choosing between Death's Door, um, which just recently came to uh, PlayStation. So I mean, people are just now really getting to to play that that aren't on Xbox or PC. Really like that because it just felt like an old school Legend of Zelda game. It was really really cool in terms of art style, music, and all that. But uh. 12 minutes was another one that surprised me too, because I'm a huge fan of anything involving like time loops, time manipulation, all that stuff. Cause I just think that's a really cool premise. And, uh, I I don't, (laughs) I thought I'd have it figured out by the time we start recording, but I I still can't, it's hard to pick between the two. Um, you know, but when I think about really the game that I went through and like which game I went through bought twice, and a hundred percented twice. Probably gonna have to give my pick twelve minutes because I really enjoyed that game that much. I know reviews were split. You know, you had people really liking the game, you had other people finding it too repetitive. It was dumb, clunky, or whatever reason they may gave. I I dug it, man. I, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was unique. I I really had a, a good time with it. That's not to say you know Death's Door is a weaker game or anything. It's just. 12 minutes was just unique. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it because of that. You know, I think I even tweeted out at the studio, letting them know like, Hey, I really loved your game. And, and they liked it and retweeted it. I'm like, Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 12 minutes. I would agree with that. Skinner favorite indie game that you played in 2021. So I was looking through all the games that I played in 2021. And I think I do have an indie game on that. Okay. List. Um, because I, as I was looking at who did it, Vader Immortal is not by any of the big names that I recognize. I mean, really, it's uh, ILM X Lab and Perp. Um, yeah, I don't know them exactly. I, that's why I had the case on my desk because I was like <laughs> so trying you can to look that. <laughs> so I could look. Yeah, um, and. For an indie game, like this is not EA, this is not one of the big properties, mm-hmm. a VR game on top of that, I f- 
found it really well done. The voice acting was good. The storyline was good for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I say that a lot because, you know, I don't want anyone to just be like, oh, well, I played it and it was the biggest pile of hot trash I've ever seen. I'm going to say it absolves you from from any of those like the (laughs) the flame comments coming at you. Right. You know, because I understand I'm not like I like mist. I like I like long, slow burns. I like puzzles. I like, you know, I've almost got that witness plat. I'm going to get the plat on the witness. That's um, impressive. I only have one left. I have one trophy left, and that's the big one at the end. The big secret, uh, 15 minute long, uh, every puzzle in the game type thing. Um, okay. I know people who have played it know what know what you're talking about. I, I don't because I tapped out like 30 minutes in because I'm like, I'm bad at puzzles. So why am I playing this? Yeah, no, I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, but this right here, being able to wield a lightsaber being able to wield a hypo spanner. Um, I mean, just uh, my inner nerd was very happy and for it to be an indie, it it was beautiful. Like you get to look out on Mustafar at certain times, like on the lava plains and see it and like look all the way around 360 because you're in VR. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, it was fun. It was fun. It's good. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's transition to uh, maybe not one, probably one we don't really want to talk about a whole lot of revisit, but we're going to anyway. We're going to dump into the dumpster for a little bit and talk about our least favorite slash worst game we played in 2021. And the reward, the award for this one is aptly called the dumpster. Those of you in the Discord will <laughs> remember the dumpster. So, Adam. <laughs> The Dumpster Award. Which game do you have in mind for this one? I mean, honestly, I didn't play. I try. I mean, when you got limited time, I try not to play a game that right. has too much potential for being straight up garbage. Mm-hmm. I think maybe people who, who maybe are more in the games industry have, have time. But I think, I mean, Skinner's the same. He played really only great games this year. And so. Yeah. It's hard to call some of the like games the dumpsters. Probably the game that didn't connect with me the most is I guess maybe um what I will do. And it's hard. I mean, because I think I mentioned Astral Chain earlier. That game is really good. I wouldn't say it's a dumpster game, it just didn't right. grab me. Um I even think of a game that I enjoyed but I barely played. I think of like Pokemon Snap. A really good game. I'm not gonna say it's a dumpster game, mm-hmm. but It didn't have enough. I can see why I liked it when I was younger and I would just, you know, play it on the 64 and let it be. But when your time's limited, I'm not going to be a guy that's going around trying to snap every photo and get all the uniques, whatever. So, um, again, I don't really want to call any of them dumpster games, but probably maybe my, the game I played the least that I thought I would have played more of. I I guess maybe I'll say Pokemon Snap. Okay. Fair Mm -hmm. enough. Well, perhaps, as I'm thinking, sitting here thinking about it, maybe the dumpster is too harsh of an award title. Maybe we can rename no, it to no, the... No, no, uh, no, no, I've got one. I'll at least, at least in Adam's case, we'll call it the uh, It's Not You, It's Me Award. <laughs> it's Not You, It's Me Award. <laughs> okay. We'll call it that. We'll call it that. Um, mine is definitely... Skyward Sword, probably? No. No. No, that's coming up for something else. Um, I'm going to be honest. This one, it's like I knew kind of what to expect from this game when I was, you know, watching the trailers and leading up to it. But I was like, no, it's it's got to be really good, right? I'm sure I'm going to pick it up. I'll buy the collector's edition, and it'll be really, really good. Unfortunately, Biomutant was really, really disappointing. Oh, I knew you were going there. Yeah. I, the collector's edition. I will say this. The collector's edition is easily one of the best that I've gotten in a long time. because that It was statue, beautiful. The statue's great. The poster, the wall scroll thing is really good. It, it was a good collector's edition. I'm going to, I'm you know, I'll give them props to that. Like best collector's edition of the year award goes to them. Um, but the game, man. Oh. And, and what's bad about it is I can see kind of the the good in the game like you know the, the kind of diamond in the rough sort of thing but it just i i 
put well depending on where you look if you look on my xbox account i put like 70 hours in the game because the time clock doesn't stop when you put your system in standby but if you look at playstation uh i've got maybe 15 to 20 hours into it and i was trying to push through i was trying to enjoy it but man i encountered so many bugs one keeping me from progressing a certain storyline and (sighs) i found out that when you look on the back of the box you're supposed to be able to like mutate your your mutant with like uh, like pincer claws and different things and have it do different abilities. None of that is in the game, but it's on the back of the box, which is really weird. And it just, it didn't control well. It it looked goofy. It It's going to be a game I get one day on PlayStation Plus. I'll try yeah, it. Out. Right? So it just, now again, I know that they've patched it a lot, so I haven't really played it since then, but I put 15 to 20 hours and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to move on to something else. But cool collector's edition though. I did like that. The statue's cool. But yeah, overall, the game just sorely, sorely disappointed me. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily a dumpster, but it's definitely disappointing. But Skinny, let's kick it to you. You said you had you very like enthusiastically. Very like, enthusiastic. a lot of energy was like, I've got one. So what what's your dumpster pick? OK, and it actually hurts me to say this one. Oh, I know what you're going to say. No, I actually, I don't think you do. But OK, you OK, let, let's see. Jump Force. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, I was not <laughs> expecting that. I legit uh, thought you were going to say Kingdom Hearts 3 because you said it pains you to say it. And I was like, okay, uh, the only one no, I know No, no, no. I actually enjoyed Kingdom Hearts 3. You bite <laughs> your tongue, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So wait, wait, wait. Jump Force. R- remind me what this game is. Basically, that's all the anime shonen characters, a fighting game, kind of similar to DBZ. That's uh, right. Kakarot. Um this game should have been so good and should have been supported for a long time. And as of this month, Ubisoft has killed the servers and taken it off all online sales platforms. You can't even buy the game anymore. You really? can't you'll see anymore. It is shut down. Huh? And that's, that's why weird. it's my dumpster because it had the potential to be such a good thing to last for a while. Cause people were still playing it. It's a fighting game. Yeah. It's not if you would have played it when it came out, they probably would have kept it going. But when you get to it 17 <laughs> years later, it's hard for them to get mad when they're like, this guy's it, finally it, playing our game. Old. and he's The game's only like two years old. Yeah, I think but that it, was a 2020 game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just giving you a hard time. But yeah, I mean, it was like the intro, the uh, the video trailer for it was so good because you had the big three. You had, um, you had Naruto. You had... Um, Remember you had Luffy Goku, from uh, One Piece in there. You had Luffy. Yeah, those are the old school big three. You had Luffy, Goku, and Naruto. Um, and then they added in like My Hero Academia characters. You had Bleach characters. You That's had, right. I mean, it was like the lineup was getting thick. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, my son had just started picking it up. He was starting to learn it. We were getting ready. You know, we had started playing this. And now all of a sudden, oh, by the way, we're shutting everything down as of January 1. Mm. and so that's actually my, my dumpster is actually ubisoft um <laughs> <laughs> plot twist the dumpster actually goes to you ubisoft <laughs> that's right um which i think that's that's them who did it um it's either them uh, or bandai namco actually i think it might be band I'm well bandai namco but i think it was with ubisoft like so it was the worst of both worlds um yeah please i know for sure bandai namco is involved because they were the main on it. But I want to say Ubi was part of it. It says Spike Chunsoft. They made Danganronpa, the ReZero game, AI, the Somnium Files. Okay, I'm not super familiar with it these It might have been now. just Bandai that was supporting the uh, servers. And- oh, it was published by Bandai Namco. That's why I'm remembering right. it. Right. But Spike Chunsoft made it. Anyway, all right. Yeah. It was well, actually a decent game. Um mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't the best fighting game. Um, sure. That's going to always be either Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Yeah. Hollow. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's the dumpster because uh, any time that you, like way before the life cycle of a game is done, pull services, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to flame you for that. Fair that's just wrong. You just, you, I mean, you basically told your fan base, we don't care that you bought all this stuff and we don't care that you might still want to buy some of it. We're just taking it all down. We don't care. Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, I guess I'll cross that one off my uh, out of my library then because I had it in there and it doesn't sound like yeah, I it's it it it's not going to have hardly anything there for you. There will be still like the main part of the game is still available. Like if you've got a physical copy, you can still mm-hmm. go play it. Or if um, I don't know that you can still download it. I know you're supposed to be able to, but I don't yeah. know that you can because um, right. they were pulling it all down. Fair so that's my dumpster. All right. Well, we definitely felt a lot with this yes. award, but we're gonna we're gonna switch it over to a new award that made us feel something. Right? I don't have a good word for it. it just says made me feel something positive or negative. Because again, the cool thing about video games they make us feel things, right? Some, they put you in your feels. They put you in your feels, right? And maybe we can call it that in my feels. But not every feeling. <laughs> I think Adam's singing drink over there. Um, but <laughs> games make us feel stuff. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. It's not the best thing in the world. But when Adam, I think about you. No. Oh, I don't want this is a Christian else. We'll just stop there. Adam, what's your pick for this award? Yeah, so... <laughs> right before um, we get demonetized. Not that we I are was monetized, trying to, but, I was trying right? to think a little bit about this as I was looking over my list of games. I can't... I mean, again, I can't think of any game that really, like, pulled it out of me this mm-hmm. year, like the tears. But I think the game that just... The emotion of just joy and happiness is when I got to play my first couple rounds of Mario Party Superstars. Yeah. Just the thought of they did it right. I think we, I don't know if it was pre-show or in the regular show when we, when we, I think it was, the show's gone on for a while now. Um, I think it was when we were talking about what I've been playing, but getting to just have a good Mario Party game yep. and the feelings of maybe nostalgia, playing through these games with my friends back in the day, it just warmed my soul. That yeah. is That is Adam. Adam, Thinking of the good old days with the boys playing video games, whether that's COD, Mario Party, whatever it is. SOCOM, U.S. Navy SEALs on our SOCOM Sundays. Mm. You hit me in that spot, and my wife will tell you, I get like super emotional of those things. I'm very nostalgic for the good old days with the boys. So that would probably be the one that's just, ugh, just yeah. super, like, what a good game. Yeah. That one, uh, I'll let you have that one. I, I did get that one for Christmas and that was part of the reason why uh, my Christmas day was so awesome with my wife because our plans fell through. So we wound up staying home uh, this year, but it was playing a few rounds of that. I was like, man, this feels so much better than the last one. This is, this is great. I love we how need to I'm, play some online, man. Yeah, man. Hit me up. Mila Deville. We'll get her in there. Yeah, she, uh, she uh she gets very competitive. She's beaten me a couple times now. First few rounds we played, I beat her and she did not like that. She's like, I don't like this game. It's giving you stars for no reason, Logan. You because you have what the most money? That's stupid. And so we we turn that off and then she started beating me. I'm like, okay, there it is. Um but yeah, I know that's it's a good one. If you have a switch, it's it's well worth picking up. Great. Yeah, if you have yeah. a switch. Yeah. Well, you, you're more likely to have a Switch than you are a PS5 or Xbox Series system at this point. So, you know. Skinner's Who like, needs to play on my Wii? <laughs> hey, shut up. I finally got my Wii working. My Wii okay? U. <laughs> Adam, he'll get a Wii U in two years uh, yeah. when, when there's a new Switch. Um, so, uh, there's a few games I was thinking about for this one. I had Returnal locked in the chamber for this one for a while because I've never felt so viscerally angry playing a game as I did Returnal <laughs> to the point where I'd like get so mad in a fit of rage I break the game case and throw it in the trash can. But there was one other game that set me on a roller coaster of emotion to where I felt like I was literally losing my mind and I was going to Did you do to. an episode on it? I may have done an episode on it and it may have been the one that we ended 2021 with. That's right. My pick is Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Let me just say this. If you listen, if you haven't listened to the episode, let me summarize it a little bit. There was moments where I was really loving this game. Then I hit a certain point where it's just a bunch of fetch quests and it's repeating itself over and over. I'm like, I hate this. This is terrible. And then you reach the end of the game and you're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is the most epic Zelda game I've ever played in my life. This is so cool. I love it. And so... The ending was awesome when I went and l- watched it so that I could ah. cut audio from it. Skinner, you, you're you the real OG. People don't know this, but Skinner gets so many games ruined for him from editing the <laughs> show 
So now he knows what to look forward to. But no, Skyward Sword, <laughs> there's parts that are great. There's parts that are horrible. But it was a roller coaster ride. Nonetheless, it had me feeling a great many feelings during the 30 to 40 hour uh, time span I spent with the game. So I'm going to give that award of the In My Feels to Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. We're probably like 10 years late because Skyward Sword's been out forever, but uh, whatever. Play it on the Switch. The stick controls are great. Thank goodness I didn't have to use motion controls because those are awful. But Skinner, what's the game that got you in your feelings, man? Okay, so to a statement Adam made earlier, I actually did get to play a lot of great games this year. You did, man. A little um, jealous, actually. <laughs> I mean, my plat list, I've got nine plats now. Um, I added Bingo. five this year. Look at you go. I, I'm trying to follow in my uh, my fearless leader's footsteps. Ah, here. okay, okay, okay. Um, but there are two right now. Um, I mean, Horizon Zero Dawn almost made that list because it was, the story was great. Mm-hmm. But there are two right now that are battling for the number one for In My Feels. And they are both from 2018. Okay. One is God of War, and the mm. other is Spider Man. Yeah, buddy. Yep. Yep. And I'm having a tough time. How How do you choose between two of the greatest games to have released <laughs> within the last ten years? Right. God of War, man. The father son dynamics in that right? game are next level. Okay, no. but next here's level. what's killing me on Spider Man. There's two things in Spider Man's killing me right now. Hmm. The Spoilers. Aunt May stuff. I know. Yeah, I knew you were going to bring that. I'm up. not saying what. I'm I know. Saying. I know. Aunt May's sweet. And, and, the Stan Lee cameo. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. Yeah, that one does hit different. Uh huh. It yeah. hits a lot different now. The two. Well, there's two different cameos, really. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you have. Well, I'll let you play it. But I mean, if you haven't played it. Or, whatever you, there's two look if skinner's played it by now you're too late okay <laughs> so the statue and stanley being in the game itself there you go we'll just say it it's, yeah it hits different now it really does so that I mean it's tough it's really tough because as a you know an old comic book geek that's hard but the father-son dynamic in mm-hmm. god of war and the whole big reveal at the end of who boy actually is mm-hmm. um leading into what i'm sure is going to be an epic god of war coming up yeah this is gonna be nuts this year i mean it's 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 a toss-up it's a real hard toss-up i know how do you pick well you pick by just saying it's god of war because <laughs> that game overall this is the best um, game that's ever been made I mean, it, it it really it it pulls in everything. It's platforms. It's puzzles. It's a amazing storyline with mythological creatures that, and you know, gods and goddesses, whatever. So it twisted a little just so that it could make sense. But it it's a story that makes sense. And the only reason I picked that over Spider Man is because I fully intend to play Miles Morales this year. Yeah. So I'll still be able to bring it up next year. It's true. Gosh, Miles Morales is such a good game, dude. Okay, so, uh, so I, I haven't had that really spoiled for me, so I'm hoping to actually get to play that one before it's spoiled. So good, me. dude. So, I need to go back and play both those games. Those are so good. I yeah, keep, uh, um, Spider-Man was one of my plats. God of War was one of my plats. Horizon Zero Dawn. So Good deal, I mean, man. I'm... I'm looking forward to Forbidden West because it says I'm going to get to play it on the PS4. There you I'm go, so man. Excited. There you go, man. Why don't you just play Bioshock first? Yeah, yeah. Play that first, and then you can go to <laughs> Horizon. Cool your jets, there, buddy. Cool yeah, cool your jets, there. Buddy. <laughs> Again, dear listeners, Twitter, tag him, tag him. Just everybody, just tag Skinner and be like, play Bioshock. What are you doing? Come on, I'm at least started. the first one. You know, and Uncharted. I mean, the third one, all three of the Bioshocks you have to play. I did yeah. play the first Uncharted. I've beaten the first Uncharted. Okay, I, so I, you've gotten kind of the worst one out of the way then. You know, um, I said that with I air did, quotes. D- I did that on PS3. Space. So, yeah. um, and you get to go play two and three, which are objectively amazing. Man, the, the difficulty uptick on 
part one was insane though. Yeah, I don't want to relive that. That's what that's made me hate the game. Things okay. that don't make me hate games though is our community. We we talk about our community a lot on the show because our community is literally the best around. Okay, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if someone comes in and you're like, uh, actually, do, do you, no, stop it. Okay, okay, like the rock. I'm gonna be like, it doesn't matter what you think because our community is the best community around. This is a new one this year. Dear Listener of the Year Award. Uh, we just want to recognize some outstanding members of our community here. So congratulations. You guys get an award. And hopefully you listen to the show and you listen to this part because if you don't, then uh, I don't know how you're going to find out because uh, I literally forget everything I say on an episode after we hit like, I can stop. confirm this. I can actually confirm this. It's like when you preach and you're just like, what did I just say when I was on stage? I don't know. I kind of blacked out and let the Holy Spirit do its thing. <laughs> like, I, I hope it was biblically sound because if not, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm out, I guess. Uh, but Adam, let's kick it to you, man. Dear listener of the year award. Actually, fun little behind the scenes thing. This is one Adam brought in to the show. He's like, hey, why don't we? Why don't we and I'm like community? the least engaged in the discord and everything. I was kind of letting Logan but, you know, I'll do this. I give him all kinds of grief in the fantasy critic. He's been a longtime supporter. And he won the Deer Critics this last year in fantasy. So I'm going to give it to Mr. Alex Castellanos. Well done, fantasy critic. Hope to catch a Mets game with you this summer. Um, TRG meetup, man. You the man. There you go. There you go. I'm going to save mine for last. Skinner, I'm going to kick it over to you and uh, put you on the spot a little bit. But, man, you're, you're in the Discord. You see some people on Twitter. Oh yeah. You know, who do you got in mind for dear listener of the year? I actually, I actually have a few cause I'm, I'm actually discord is where I spend a lot of my time. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my phone just stays pinging from all the different <laughs> You're supposed panels to turn I'm the notifications in. off for discord, man. <laughs> for some of them I do for sure. I've got some of them turned <laughs> off. Um, but some of them I leave on because you know, I'm an admin, so I gotta, I gotta stay on the pulse of the community. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that brings me to where I'm going to pull from because, to be honest, our mods are amazing. Yep. Yep. A- and so well, you're assuming got- the mods are listening to the podcast. I know they at do. least one of them does because <laughs> one of them's a page a Patreon supporter. Yeah. Maybe two um, of them. So there's there's two guys I have in mind. One of them is definitely not going to get it because he called me a blimp in another um, <laughs> um, channel. Was that Crumquat? It sounds like something that Crumquat would yes. say. Yes, yes, it was. It actually. was Matt. <laughs> yes, and he's a Dirty Falcons fan, so uh, you so got he, stuff against you, Matt. I'm sorry. Yep. So Crumbles, you know, next time don't call me a blimp. Although <laughs> I was so was, happy when the Saints didn't make the playoffs. It made my day so bad. So uh, much scared. I was why? so happy. Why? Uh, anyway. Man, that's harsh, man. That's just harsh. We're, we're getting into it here on the show. This is, this is happening. Yeah. You know, and it's only because of the Rams. Again. We would have made anyways, the playoffs this year anyways. if the Rams had won. Um, <laughs> stupid Niners. Uh <laughs> uh sports okay sorry sorry uh yeah the sports ball um but i'm actually gonna give it to my fellow saints fan who's uh in the discord um believe it or not and i mentioned him earlier my boy mo yeah who is this um he's uh, he stays really involved he's a really good mod um actually all our mods are great to yeah. be honest we're i mean they're selling. Working, um and all of them i mean they they really do uh, keep the community going and stay on top of things and, you know, make sure that the theology doesn't go too crazy. And they are not <laughs> yeah. uh, they are not afraid to confront people spitting heresy. So, mm-hmm. you know, which is I mean, that takes guts because, you know, it's an online community. Right. You know, mm-hmm. um, it takes yeah. time. That's the biggest thing. A lot of times it takes yeah. time. Yep. And that a was a lot of patience. Yeah. And with over 700 folks having, you know, having to look at all these different chats and stay on top of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, Mo, Mo gets my dear listener of the year. Um, You know, we saints boys, we ride and die. Right on. (laughs) You know, I was sitting here thinking about the mods that that I've picked for both Facebook and discord. And I think what, I think what, what's so great about all of them is that they keep things perfectly balanced. Like all things should be. Like all things should be. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm. 
I probably shouldn't, you know, idolize Thanos as much as I do. That's probably a bad thing. <laughs> but he's just, he's so, he's so quotable, man. He's so quotable. He looks like Gromit from, well, you know, Gromit. But it is what it is. So, obviously, we've covered a little bit of Facebook, a little bit of Patreon. We've covered a little bit of the Discord here. So, I'm going to come at this with uh, my preferred social media dumpster fire of choice, which is Twitter. And, you know, as I see a lot of, you know, as I manage that and see all the notifications that come through and even the ones that I wish I hadn't seen, you know, thank you for those of you that Rick roll me from time to time. Greatly appreciate that. But new thing for me to do. Great. Don't, awesome. Ah, dang it, Skinner. Uh, but there, there's been a few, last year was a lot of fun too being on Twitter because specifically in the summer when I was kind of starting my teacher certification, doing YouTube content, I mean, I was on the computer. I was on this computer uh, a lot. And man, there's two people I can think of. One of them I mentioned earlier, um, who's always liking stuff, always retweeting stuff. And that's uh, Kokoro Daki, dude. Shout out to you. Just always on Twitter, man. I always see you in, in the notification thing, liking stuff, retweeting stuff, interacting, engaging. You know, it's, it's good to see. And the other one I want to highlight is someone who I'm bringing on. Is it next month or March? I have to check the the list. Um, is Jonathan Sound of the Rain? He's a uh, Christian rapper. He has a YouTube channel where he does a lot of like reviews for you know more like pop culture, nerd culture stuff. Um, has some really cool hip hop beats and stuff. Some are you know catered more towards towards gaming. So if you're a fan of like Mega Ran. Um, you can go check his stuff out. He does. He has two songs that I listened to recently. One was on Shang Chi, the other one was uh, on Ken from Street Fighter. But he's got some really good ones. If you really like Christian hip hop too, he's really really good. Um, so if you want to check him out ahead of the show, you can go check him out on Spotify. Sound of the Rain. I'll type a. I'll type some of these awards out in the uh, show notes so you know how to look up look them up. But those two specifically come to mind because they were always. Liking stuff, retweeting. Oh, dude! Now I'm thinking of a uh, Chef Jai. I think is is what his name is. Um, he uh, he's really fun too. But he his family got him a PS5, and he tagged us in in the reveal video. And man, it was it's always cool to see stuff like that. So I guess I'm doing a loophole and giving three out right now. So there you go, Chef Jai, Sound of the Rain, and Kokoridaki. There you guys go. Just because I remember y'all from from Twitter. I'm sure I'm forgetting people, but those are the ones that stand out the most. Uh, in my mind. So congratulations to y'all, dear listeners of the year. I guess since I'm talking about Twitter, dear followers of the year, whenever it works, it works. Yep. Now we have it deliberated. Does. We've deliberated long enough. Oh, okay. 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 Well, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the Reform Gamers. I'm going to end the show now and you'll never know what our game of the year is. No, I'm kidding. But we, <laughs> we've gotten to that point. Here it is the show, game of the year. We've played a good chunk of games when I was cataloging uh, my stuff, just kind of at the year taking stock of everything I played. I think I played close to 30 games, 40 games last year, plenty of games. Um, not all of them came out last year, obviously, because I was tackling my backlog, but man, there's, it's a good time to be a gamer. There's plenty of games to play. There's so many to choose from a lot of them. Like there, there's not enough time to play all these great games. Nope. But we we found time to play some of these last year, and some of them, some of them we really really enjoyed. So let's get into it, guys. Game of the year deliberation. Adam, let's kick it with you, man. Let's start with you. Uh, I was just counting mine. I played twenty five games last year. Usually, I'm right around. I'm surprised I got that that many uh, games, and usually I'm around 30 and i feel like i played a lot less this year Mm -hmm. but um probably i'll just mention some of my top games that i got that i played this year um returnal just kind of looking down ratchet and clank rift apart uh death loop metro dread hill infinite guardians of galaxy those would probably i mean i played some older games uh, like Ori Will and the Wisp, I played that on Game mm, Pass, and that's, that's a, a great good one. Game. Mm. Um, that's probably the best old game that I played this I last year. Play that one, um, really, really good game. But as I'm thinking about, as I've thought about this last year, about okay, what is my game of the year? Um, 
like I had a lot of fun with Deathloop. I love the art style. Again, just some of that replaying, learning more. I really love how they tied all the pieces together in that game. Mm-hmm. Um, Ratchet and Clank looked beautiful. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, and that's just like, um, what do they say? It's just like, I mean, it's just a comfort food. And that's what I'm looking yeah. for. You just yeah. go back to it and you're like, this is what, you know, I beat my first Metroid game with Metroid dread mm. um so just a lot of good things but I, if i think of the game that sticks in my head i haven't been able to forget about i still think and i wish i could go back to some degree and relive it but returnal i guess i could return to that that's <laughs> it was uh i mean it that game had its hooks in me more than any other game i mean staying up i would be st- there were multiple nights i stayed up to like 3 a.m. playing because I was in the middle of a run just crushing it. And I'm like, I can't take a chance on it crashing yeah. out of me. Yeah. So I would, I'd have a four, <laughs> five-hour play session, which is unheard of for me, till 3, 3.30 in the morning when I got to be up at 6, 6.37. But it was – and then talking with you and Micah and Messenger about it just – Yeah. That, that – uh, okay, let's just see how far – I'm just going to do another run. Just see how far, and then all of a sudden, I've got the perfect loadout, and I'm stuck. I've got to keep pushing, and then even finding out I wouldn't. I didn't even play the game to like. I I got to know that you, if you get the astronaut doll, that that was an extra life. I avoided it the whole time. I could have got even further quicker, but <laughs> you hear these things. I just like, why would I spend money on a stupid doll? Well, little did I know that oh, it could save my life. I remember um, when you found out about. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd already beat the game. I'm like, this yeah. is ridiculous. Uh, oh. It would have been really nice to know that early on. <laughs> but with your 99 health potions that you don't use, yeah, oh. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm like hunting everywhere to find the machine thing that I can like get in. So if I die, I go back to that. And yeah, the the risk reward that you would play in that game of okay, I'm going to take one of these parasites, and it's going to cost me something, but it's going to be worth it at the same time. And then you know, maybe you got a, a bad one or you got one of the, um, what do they call it? Uh, where it would like mess you up. It wasn't, it wasn't the parasite, but it was the other thing. The, uh, oh, like the purple, whatever it was. Um, um, and you're like taking, you're like taking your chances. Okay. I can pick this up. It may or may not affect me. I don't know. And then it does. And you're like, oh, and then like kills your run, drains your health or something like that. Or you then you get something that wipes them clear. Just all of those things playing together. Mm-hmm. It was such a good game. So personally for me, that is my game of the year. Just easily the most memorable, most fun, biggest hooks. It's not the most gorgeous game, but it looks fine. Um, but in regards to being a video game, it hit all of those points for me. I mean, story, I, I can't even tell you. Story don't even matter to me in that game. It was just <laughs> get to the end, get to the end, just the right amount of challenge. Like it was it was hard, but it wasn't. I mean, I would rather play that than Dark Souls any day of the week. Um, it was Adam. Wild. It was Adam hard. You know, it was a game that I can I can move around quick. I can yeah. it's a shooting game. Dark Souls, you got to be so precise. I don't want to be that precise. Yeah. I just want to be run and gun. And I, and you can kind of cheat some of the things in Returnal, mm-hmm. some of the rooms and things like that. So I'm twisting those things to make it work out for me. But that game was a huge surprise. So yeah. much fun, and uh, it would be my game of the year. Right on, man. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I When I think about this game, first of all, I think this game does look good. Like, oh, man, the, the, the lighting and everything looks awesome. But, you know, when you think about it, I, I can't think of a more perfect, like, Adam game, you know? All the years we've been doing the show, you always talk about how you like to run in, bang, bang, you know, and that's what you do. I, I don't want to stealth. I want to run yeah. around and just... Light them up. Yep. Returnal was made specifically for you, man. I can't think of a better pick for you than than Returnal right then and there. Well, let's kick it over to you, Skinner. What's your what's your pick, man? What are some well, let's go with that too. I mean, you know, some standout games that you played this year. I mean, we've kind of gone over those ad nauseum yeah. at this point. You yeah, know, am I right? Know. We you know what you twenty eighteen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I haven't I don't think I've mentioned Telltale Batman or Kingdom Hearts three. Wait, yes, I have. Oh, no, okay. you did. Um <laughs> Well, I, I played Persona 4 Dancing All Night. You know, that's... Yes! Uh, got that on my list here. Is that going to be your pick for Game of the Year? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. 
for heaven's sake no oh man so i don't mean to like people see me like looking down and like what's logan doing i'm running on time stamps so i can create like clips like video clips to share on social media so that way i don't forget <laughs> so i'm not like um no, no, i'm not like multitasking well i guess I, whatever skinner continue well, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my list. I, I've played, what, like 12 games this year, not counting the three phone games that I decided to delete at the end of the year because they were eating up too much of my time. Hmm. Um, I, and have been so thankful that I deleted them. Like, because mm-hmm. they were just ones, oh, I'll just play it for five minutes and an hour and a half later. Oh. Literally I, everyone playing Wordle right now. Right, right. Um and you know it was a it was a match three game and a you know plane flying nineteen forty five game. I mean, like, just stupid stuff. And I was wasting a bunch of time. And my wife called me on it, and I ignored her for months. And then I finally listened to my wife. And you know, listen to your wife, people. Happy you know? wife, happy life. Right. I mean, she was right. I, I got a bunch of time back. So yeah. Um, Really, I mean, honestly, my my choice here for game of the year is going to be, I got it down to four. I got it down to four. And that's God of War, Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Kingdom Hearts 3. (laughs) I I know you don't agree with the Kingdom Hearts 3 one. I I know. But I've come around. Like, look, people that love Kingdom Hearts, they love Kingdom Hearts. And if that's you, like, more power to you, man. Like, I'm glad you enjoy it like you do. Favorite. I really do. I mean, yes, the story is it's convoluted. But Who doesn't love some Disney in their yeah. life and yes, throw in some Final Fantasy? Exactly. It's, I mean, it's, I've been tempted to play Kingdom Hearts 3 just for the Toy Story stuff, to be honest. Dude, yeah, that Toy Story the right level things. is amazing. So. And and like uh, all the side quest stuff, you know, you, that that's another one of my plats. And, and it's just, it was all really good. I thought it was well done. Um, the story is set up for kingdom hearts four and hopefully they'll tie some stuff up. They did try to create it in such a way that you could watch the videos at the beginning to see what the story was so far and maybe kind of, uh, remind yourself, you know, especially if you didn't play the DS games or the, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, the other stuff that's all Canon, like it's one of those, it's just, everything's Canon. So you have to know everything. Um, Fun fact, my library has the manga adaptations of a few of those games. Um, so actually, yes. There's a, there's a manga adaptation of Kingdom Hearts? Yes, sir, there is. Okay. Yes, sir, there is. All right. Uh, Final Mix has one. Um, 358 over two days. <laughs> Doing algebra. Right, over here. I need you to. <laughs> we, we ain't chasing the rabbit trail. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I, I can kind of take Kingdom Hearts off because, as much as I love it and as much as I've been waiting for it to play it, um, considering the other games, the other three games, it just doesn't hold up. It's mm-hmm. not as complete. Um, it's more niche. And I realize that. Um, but Horizon Zero Dawn, um, I'm going to have to knock that one out. As much as I loved it, as okay. much time as I spent with Aloy and the story, the other two hit me harder. The yeah. Spider-Man game and the God of War game hit me harder. Back to God of War and Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back down to those two. I mean, and if I'm honest, it's God of War. There it I is. Mean, I mean, I, I got to. There like, it is. I, I love Spider-Man. It's a great, like, it's an amazing game. Mm-hmm. But Spider-Man may be more fun. Right. Whatever that means. But God of War, the whole the whole kit and caboodle package, mm-hmm. is, I mean, it's, it's, it's undisputed. The mixing, the, the, the ability to mix the armor and to upgrade the armor set so that you could do all the different things on that. Yeah. Um, I will admit to this one thing. I was playing the whole game on normal. I was going fine until that final uh, battle with the final Valkyrie. I knew he was going to... As soon as you set up difficulty and you're like, you were doing good, I'm like, okay, this sounds like literally everyone I've heard talk about until they got to the Valkyries and then they they lowered the difficulty. Only the Queen Valkyrie did I lower the difficulty on. I beat the rest of them on normal, by gosh. She's Um, a mean lady. Uh, but 
yeah, I mean, I, that's how I got my plaid. I put it on story, and I there made you go. It. Hey, no, no, no shame in that, man. I but yeah, God of War. Thing. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, God of War was just amazing. It's it's a well done game. The voice yeah. acting was on point. The story, the writers were on point. They took a character in Kratos who, let's face it, for a lot of the time was not a very sympathetic character. Mm -hmm. Um, it was hard to kind of like relate to him. It was fun to move him around and kill a bunch of people, but he wasn't relatable. They made him a relatable character. Like they showed what they could have been doing this whole time in all of his pain and anguish and everything else. Cause I played a bunch of the other ones, but it was, they would go back and forth with like, Oh, he's just enjoying it. No, he's not. Yeah. And it, yeah, this game really, really defined his character in such an amazing yeah. way. And the relationship with boy and everything that he did there, like he really just wanted to live out the rest of his life and die. Like he would, he was fine that, but obviously they're not going to let him. Yeah. And it's a good game, man. Again, that's one we did an episode on. So, dear listeners, if you're interested in that, definitely go check that out or go play it for yourself. Uh, but yeah, so far, that's my game of the year pick. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be open and honest with y'all. I ate real good in 2021 as far as games. Not you don't normally get a year where you get a good Monster Hunter, Resident Evil, Forza, Halo, and the and my girl coming back, Metroid, Dread. You know, so. I, I was eating good last year. I had plenty of good games to play. Plenty of good games to to play through. I didn't really complain. And then I played through Sekiro. You know, I played a lot of good games last year. But when I think about the two games that I probably spent the most time in and really often think about, it's between Monster Hunter Rise and Metroid Dread. And <laughs> guys, come on. You know me. I'm, I'm... This wasn't even a question. It's not even a question. My game of the year pick is Metroid Dread. Are you kidding me? Are you? Oh, kidding I thought it was Knack Two. Skinner, come on! Not even Knack Two could stand Game of the Century. It's not even Knack Two could stand Metroid Dread. Like I've talked about the game enough. I've I've talked. I've done it on you know YouTube podcasts. There isn't really anything else left for me to say about the game. It's incredible. It's everything that I wanted the game to be and more. And it's just, it's awesome. If you have not played this on your Nintendo switch yet, I don't know what you're doing with yourself at at this point. You need to, you need to play it. It's really good. My game of the year pick is Metroid dread. This comes as no surprise to, to anybody, much as I love monster hunter rise. And I look forward to playing it again on PC. Sorry, Metroid dread. My girl, Samus takes, takes precedent over all of that but with that being said dear listeners i'm gonna kick it over to you your game of the year pick from 2021 let us know what it is comments of youtube twitter facebook all those places let us know what your pick is and uh if you had any difficulty picking between them again it doesn't have to be a game that released in 2021 it could be a game that you played for the first time last year so if you played through let's say dark souls for example and you really enjoyed it leave a comment if you played through spider-man for the first time Leave a comment, but let us oh, know. Oh, Skyrim's on my list, too. Don't. Mm-mm, no, no, we're not talking about Skyrim. Mm-mm, no, 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 no. Not today, Todd Howard. So with that being said, dear listeners, thank you for tuning in to this episode, our seven year anniversary slash dear awards of 2021 uh, here on the podcast. Uh, before we let you go, I mean, you have plenty of recos already from our picks for game of the year and things of that nature, but some recos, some things that you should check out. Adam good sir what should our dear listeners check out yeah um you know we've talked some about board games in the past on here a new board game i got for christmas it's a game called calico you build mm. quilts and you have cats cuddle up on them if you build a good enough quilt so it's been a fun game okay um it's kind of you're not you're playing against someone but it's not you're really playing you're by yourself and trying to get as many points as you can. You're not really cutthroat to other people and things like that. So it's been a good game for me and Hannah to play just, you know, one-on-one. It's not a long game, but definitely a fun game. We're checking out. Um, got a couple other ones, but I haven't got to play them yet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, family life, kids, video games. <laughs> um, another thing I've, I've been 
it's helped me grow a lot in this area of scripture memory. Uh, there's a couple of them. I know people like like the Verses app. Um, mm-hmm. The one I'm using is Bible Memory. Um, it's just been really helpful for me um, taking some steps forward. I'm not on it every day, but it helps me keep up with some that I've been learning. And so, yeah, it's been a good probably three or so month, three to four month stretch where I've been using it. It's been helpful for hiding the word in my heart and help me memorize it. So if you're looking for an app or maybe you've struggled in scripture memory, uh, there's some good apps out there. I mean, we're on our phones all the time, right? And so might as well be on it doing some beneficial things. So yeah. right on Skinner. What about you, man? What are some, uh, what are some recos the dear listeners should check out? All right. Well, uh, obviously, um, it's not me on an episode if I don't bring up fostering and adoption. Nope. Um, especially not if Adam's here too. So, um, yeah, I'm still going through that process too. Yeah. We're, we're, yes, sir. 2021 will be the Big year that fan. we adopt a kid. So it'll, it's going to happen. Let's go. I believe it. But 2021 is cause I did 2022. Oh, ah, it happened. <laughs> it's 2022 <laughs> this year. Oof. Wow. Sorry. Sorry. Continue okay. with no, your that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, you know, obviously all three of us, you know, we support fostering and adoption and, um, right now my house is empty, which is, you know, kind of weird. Uh, we've been empty for some time now as we've, uh, been moving forward, uh, into missions training and stuff like that. So we're still offering respite care. Um, for those who don't know, that's where you don't take a long-term placement. You just provide respite for other foster parents. Big time need. So those are needed too. Um, Big time. Big time. Uh, in Louisiana, you get five whole respite days a year. That's it. Hmm. Um, but um, families are needed to provide those times where you need that respite. You need that uh, time like you've got to go out of town for a funeral and you can't take that poor child with you. There needs or to be families. Or you just need to rest. You, that too. <laughs> There's been a couple of those. Um, and that... Obviously, you know, us switching over into uh, respite cares because um, support your missions teams. Um, your church is probably sending money to um, some missions field person. Um, find out who that is. Pray for them. You know, find, get their email. Send, send them an email. Say, hey, I'm praying for you because I know what you're doing is what we're all called to do, but you're doing it there. I'm doing it here and that's fine, but you need to support missions. I would also recommend, um, the class that I recently started up, uh, it's called perspectives. It is a college level style class where, um, you now you can do a lesser version of it that still gets you a lot of good information. It's just key readings. Uh, it doesn't take as long. Um, but there's a lot of good information there. It's a l- been around for quite some time. Uh, I think the last updated version of the book was 2009 and that was the fourth edition. So they've been around, around for a while. Um, so if you can find a class close to you, I'd recommend going to take it. Even if you don't plan to go out on the mission field, you know, even yeah, if you just plan, class. To do it here, you should still take the class. There's a lot of good theology there, a lot of good uh, reasons showing why, you know, if we're not called or if we're not going out in the field, we still need to be treating our everyday life as the mission field, you know, as mm-hmm. we're working, as we're playing, as we're dealing with others. And I know y'all, I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, lastly, Pray every day without ceasing, multiple times a day if you can. Find the time to set apart to spend time talking to your father who loves you. Um, It's one of those things that uh, last year I started trying to do on the regular for sure. um, And it's really helped. um, And it's reminded me of how many people have it way worse off than I do and reminding me to be thankful in that as well. And that I'm 
sinning every day because I am a sinner in need of a savior, just like everyone else. No. So that's uh that's what I got. I know I went super, super Jesus juke on my recos, <laughs> but um this is how we do with the reform gamers, that's it. man. You, you that's get your it. gaming, and you get you get your uh, you get your little reformation stuff coming in hot. So you just that's how we do. That's how we do. Uh, as far as my records go, you know, since I'm not on social media anymore, I still manage the TRG social uh, Twitter account, um, and I'm in the Discord. Uh, I'm not retweeting a lot of the stuff anymore. I'm not sharing a lot of the posts anymore because I just, I've deactivated my account. So. Dear listeners, I'm going to ask you to step it up a little bit in 2022 to, you know, if you we post a new uh, episode and you really dig it, you know, share it with some friends, share it with uh, some family members, share it with, I don't know, maybe even your pastor or share it with just someone. Uh, make sure that you, you know, if you really like the content, you're sharing about it, you're talking about it with people um, and you're just letting people know, hey. TRG is a pretty dope podcast. You should check it out. Uh, so that's one of my recos. My other reco is if you're looking for, like, if you're looking to kind of cut down on your screen time, but you still want to like have a hobby to do, check out building model Gundams. Just a, you know, a little suggestion. I've enjoyed it getting into it and it's relatively cheap. You can find kits for around 20 to $30. Um, and they're pretty, that's a good time. It's at least three to four hours. Uh, you can spend building these things together. You have a, cool little model figure that looks really, really cool depending on what you get. And if you uh, need some help trying to figure out, you know, how to even get started uh, with the hobby, you know, what are some good kits to kind of start things out with? I'm looking at some of my Gundams now. Uh, hit, reach out to me on Discord uh, or even, you know, DM the the Twitter account for TRG and I'll, you know, try to steer you towards some of the more fun uh, builds that, you know, won't p- make you pull your hair out, but, you know, you are still relatively cheap and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy I, I Like I said, I've really gotten into it uh, over, over the last few months, you know, even if you just try one out and you don't like it, Hey, at least you tried a new hobby. So that's another thing I recommend. Uh, the other thing I'm going to recommend is if you're looking for a good family movie to watch together, uh, you know, you got, you're hanging out with your family and you want to watch a good movie, uh, and you got Disney plus check out Encanto because I love that movie. Uh, I've had surface pressure stuck in my head for three weeks now. It's just, the jam. It's that's a jam, one. man just that is the one it's the drip 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 like a grip that'll never stop you know or never let go or however it goes drip, drip, drip. uh awesome Luis is easily my favorite character but yeah great movie if you have disney plus uh well worth checking out really really good skinner is losing his mind i i have to tell you something i finally seen m game i remember you talking about that in in discord yeah Welcome to, seen, uh, what was it? Welcome to 2018. You're still 2019, in 2019, 2019. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. I was like, wait, dude, you've just been living in 2018 and 2021 is what you've been doing. <laughs> but now I can yeah. watch, um, Falcon and the winter soldier and, um, all the Loki and all of those little shows. Right so now on, I can man. watch those. Right on. I what forgot about that. I meant to tell you that. That's good. That's actually a good segue into, you know, Hey, if you guys want to support TRG, uh, or hang out and connect with the, the community, Discord link to it. It's in your show notes or on YouTube, uh, Facebook group, Twitter, all of, all those places. Links to everything will be in your show notes. If you like what we do here in TRG and you're thinking, you know, I want to support a a podcast, a Christian podcast that doesn't suck, as you know, people tell us on Twitter. Uh, consider supporting us over on Patreon, getting uh, exclusive early access to our episodes like this one here. I'm looking at the timer: two and a half hours, almost of just chocolatey good i don't know why it's chocolate podcast goodness uh the public release one won't be as long and it will have stuff edited out so if you want this shows early uncut uh you can support us over there on patreon and get those behind the scenes and more uh but yeah you can also support us uh merch shop we've got that as well link will be in your show notes check that out anything else that i'm forgetting will be in your show notes but guys seven years of trg no sign of stopping anytime soon well, we're going to get it. But guys, thanks for joining me on this episode. I appreciate y'all. It was fun to be here. Um, anytime, be you know, basically, like I said, you asked me, do I want to be on a show? That's yeah. Don't even got to ask. Just no. say, just tell you when and you'll show up. It's but, been yeah. fun just being a listener again. I mean, it's, it's great jumping on, but it's good keeping up with the different hosts and stuff like that. So thanks for having me back. And again, yeah, man. I'll be on here and there. Yeah, man. So for sure. And with that, dear listeners, thank you for listening, and uh, be a dear. Keep it locked here. We'll see you in the next episode.